very impressive back to you guys again more g1 climax 30 action we might as well skip the formalities you know who i come with i come with the exalted one the motherfucking uh book junkie yourself almighty jay john and my illustrious tag team partner john how are you uh, i'm very sad that my extended weekend is over but not quite so sad that we have some cool stuff to talk about for the g1 100 I, I shouldn't even have to introduce my tag and y'all should already know but you know, you know what it is for new listeners. That's you know the good sis Jenna, and of course me. You know who I pro wrestle fly guy. You know the fly guy don't like ugly, so you know what it is. And G one climax has definitely not been ugly. It's been kind of pretty. It's been damn damn pretty. You know, so we getting down to the nitty gritty. People, their opponents are getting the numbers getting less and less. You know, you, you're you've had more matches than you have left. So we're getting to that point in the G one climax. We're pretty much rounding out our night in Osaka. This is our last of the two shows in Osaka. My home away from home, if you guys didn't know. I've spent many, many nights in Osaka. We wouldn't even talk about it. I might share that on another show, like my, my Osaka nights. But anyway, <laughs> we are here in the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium right here. We might as well get into this card without any further ado. We had an attendance of 2,369. Of course, reduced attendance as we are going to have through these shows. So let's go through these matches and these results right here. First match you got on this non-G1 match, but actually, it is, it's not a G1 Climax match, but haven't heard anybody say this. We got the C-Block. C-Block is back. I'm calling it that right now. The reigning champion, David Finlay, he's not here, so it's a vacancy for this championship. We got Yamura, Yoda Suji, and we got our boy Gabriel Kidd buying to see who's going to be that C-Block champion right here. So that gives us to the action of Yoda Suji taking on Yuri Yamura right here. These guys, I don't know. This it, is really weird, like, and I think you brought this up on the show earlier they just you yamura kid they're going to wrestle yoda suji's is looking to fight people and kind of backfired against him tonight because he actually ate a double a double overhook suplex by yuri yamura in about nine minutes three seconds right here so that was our first action second match of the night right here which is a match i was highly anticipating highly looking forward to we have stone pit bull tomohiro ishii he's sitting on right now at this point three wins and three losses taking on the man himself, former Mantanza of Lucha Underground fame. How can we not love him? Everybody loves him. Jeff Cobb right here. So we actually get Jeff Cobb winning this match with the Tour of the Islands. So Jeff Cobb, I don't know if I would necessarily say this is upset, but Jeff Cobb's picked up wins over guys that maybe going into the tournament you didn't think he would pick up wins over. So Jeff Cobb actually gets his third victory. He's got six points right now. Tomaru Ishii, he falls to three and four, still sitting on six points with the tiebreaker. That means Cobb's a little bit ahead of him. Ate the tour of the islands, but there's no shame in losing to Jeff Cobb. Man is an Olympian after all. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say this because not because of the action itself, but damn it, my match tonight because of what the sequences occurred. And I'm not even gonna say match tonight. I'm gonna say my favorite spot of the night. Not really spot. My favorite this portion of the night. We have Jay White taking on Yujiro Takahashi here. Jay White actually hits him with the Blade Runner in about three minutes and four, 40 seconds right here. But it, that's not the story. We'll get more to the story. After we give, give him the full results, then we go to the pool, penultimate match right here. We have Boy Osprey defeating Taichi in a solid match, which we'll talk more about that. Stormbreaker, 16 minutes, 26 seconds. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. He got the win. He's And I, I, let me give the points for Jay, or Jay Osprey for Jay White and Yujiro before I give the points for Will and Taichi. Jay is sitting. This is actually his fifth win. He has two losses. He's sitting on 10 points. Poor Yujiro, 0-7. Oh and, and, of course, that means zero points. So... Osprey himself, he's sitting on a record of five and two, equaling 10 points. Holy Emperor Taichi is sitting on a record of three and four, equaling six points right here. So next week at the main event in the show, and by God, this was a damn solid main event. We have Kota Ibushi defeating, not just really defeating, it was this was this this was blood sport in itself. Defeating Minoru Suzuki here, right under 17 minutes. Kamagoye. This was excellent. It wasn't the main event, but it was the penultimate match of the night. It, these last two matches are really solid, and we're going to go ahead and break them down. Speaking of the main event, we got Kasuchika Okada getting this 10th point right here, defeating Shingo Takagi in their first meeting, defeats him with the referee stoppage in about 27 minutes and 45 seconds. So these two, the penultimate and the main event, were really, really fucking solid. They were really damn good, and you can argue that Ibushi and Minoru Suzuki is probably maybe the match of the tournament, depending on people's taste right here. So, Jay, we got a what are your thoughts on the show? What what do you take from the show? Where was it some stuff that you liked from the show? Was some stuff that made you, you know, go, hmm, from the show? And what were your favorite matches? Uh, 
My goodness, there there were some very good things going on on this show. I know that we're at that point in the G1 where for a lot of people things may start to drag or they find the shows to be dull in general, but you know, there were some very, very good things here. Um, we'll start with the main event because it was the main event, and I found it very interesting that once again, we have a referee stop. You know, how many does this make? This is not the first one. And so I'm kind of torn between does this mean that people are just refusing to tap? Or is this a necessary referee stop because, oh, yeah. Okada's going to kill somebody if the ref doesn't stop it because that I can see where somebody would interpret that, but that's not how it's coming across to me. What it's coming across to me is your hold is a bitch and I refuse to tap out to it, mm. especially with somebody like Shingo Takagi, who's just like, nope, not going to do it. And yeah, I, I think we have to give, credit where it's due you know okada's getting a lot of praise for this match with shingo being basically where okada seems to have woken up at least a little bit but shingo owned him for a large chunk of this match and i think if anybody had any doubt whatsoever that Shingo Takagi was a legit main event player, those doubts should be very thoroughly erased by this point because Shingo did everything but win this match. And I think he absolutely could have won this match. It was another case of, you know, a, a main event going very close to the full 30 minutes, you know, 27 minutes and 45 seconds i think really close so you know they're they're pushing it you know we haven't had an actual draw of you know this type yet but you know even as somebody who has never been an okada fan i really really enjoyed this match because it really cemented what a lot of fans have been saying since he showed up two years ago that Shingo Takagi can do anything against anybody. And this match showed that you can put him in your main event against your most dominant and decorated champion ever. And not only does he look like he belongs, he kicked his ass. So, you know, go Shingo, or as I have now officially christened him on Twitter, Rain Dragon. Sorry, Okada, mm -hmm. I don't make the rules. I would have to say, before we go on to the penultimate match, if you were to say this is Okada's best match right here in this tournament, I don't think I could disagree with you. He had a damn good match with Jeff Cobb. A little underwhelming effort with Minoru Suzuki. He also had a really good match with Kota Ibushi to start the tournament off, which I think kind of gets forgotten about because we've had a lot of things happen in this tournament. And no, Shingo Takaki owned this match right here. I was really excited for this first time meeting. And I know it's kind of hard because... Okada has been in this, I guess, law right now. And I credit to the guys that he has had a referee stoppage with this uh, money clip. Even though we still we think it's a shit move and we think it's a shit way that the, it kind of just takes some momentum out of everything. The guys who he has stopped or the referee stoppage has happened, they have sold it like it was death. Because credit to Shingo Takagi, he was selling that move like it was death when he was getting put in it. Like he, he, his facial expressions during the submission. I was buying it because of Shingo Takagi, and it really had nothing to do with Okada. So credit to Shingo Takagi for that shit. Credit to Taichi for being the one to sell that as well, because they were selling it like it was death. So I think this is one of Okada's best matches of the tournament. This is kind of like what Shingo does. So <laughs> good shit. Yeah, do you have something rubbing up against your mic? Because you're clicking a lot. Hold on. I'm going to fix that right now, because it is my hoodie. So hold on one second. Is, is if you want to, uh, while I'm taking my hoodie off, if you want to go ahead and talk about the penultimate match, that would be great as yes. well. Yes, oh, God. I, I would love to talk about this match because this, uh, as much as I loved Shingo's performance in the main event, this was my favorite match of the night because it was a legit even match. And right at 17 minutes, it certainly did not go too long, you know, 
it might have actually gone a little bit longer, and I may not have been upset with that. But, you know, Kota Ibushi getting a victory over Minoru Suzuki with not even your standard Kamagoye. He basically had to do a, you know, jumping Kamagoye. It was almost like a V-trigger Kamagoye. But, yeah, this match was amazing. And it was amazing for all the right reasons. Kota Ibushi did not do any high-flying in this match at all. And he even said himself in the backstage comments that a lot of people want to characterize him as a high-flyer type of wrestler, but he is not limited to that, that fighting Minoru Suzuki, which he had not done in, I believe, seven years. So, you know, this was not a match we had seen at all for a very long time. He said fighting Minoru Suzuki brought him back to his martial arts training days. And, you know, he has that, you know, kickboxing and martial arts background. It's just that he's able to do all these other flashy things that we've come to kind of identify with him. But he can go in a very different direction, and we saw that here. And I I think my favorite stuff was when you saw that switch get flipped and you had murder face Kota Ibushi and murder dad Minoru Suzuki and... Suzuki's just laughing like they're both no selling everything from each other. And even, you know, Ibushi gets the three count with a jumping Kamigoye. Suzuki is laying on the mat laughing. You know, he should be unconscious and he's laughing. Mm. And again, yeah, I, I love the backstage comments on these shows. If you're not watching them, you really are missing out. He comes backstage, he's still laughing. And he's talking about what a good time he had. And he, then he just walks away and you're like, all right, murder dad, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so this this match was a totally different side of Kota Ibushi for the duration of the entire match than we typically see. And it's the best side of Minoru Suzuki all thrown together. And yeah, again, as much as I love Shingo's performance in the main event, if I could pick one match from this show to watch again, it's this one. 100%. And I, you said everything that I needed to say. Suzuki smiling while taking that pinfall. You're a movie buff like I am. That was very reminiscent to me from the Batman 89 movie where the Joker had taken his, you know, deathly fall. And when they got to the pavement, the Joker's just laying there with a smile on his face. That I was just like, wow, that kind of took me back to the Jack Nicholson Joker scene. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and another thing, too, is we see Suzuki in these ma- or normally after these matches, he might be a little upset or, you know, he'll be kind of pitching a fit how Minoru Suzuki does. And as you were saying that and how, what he was saying about his post-match, I don't know. This is just a, a kayfabe theory that I have of Minoru Suzuki. Just about, see how, if you feel me on this. I feel if Minoru Suzuki is defeated by means he feel is just. And I feel ways that he feels are just is pretty much how Kota Ibushi fought him. He fought him like this was a martial arts fight. I think if Minoru Suzuki is able to get bested in that form of combat, he's totally fine with that. He's like, okay, you got me in that. I think when he gets beat by like somebody like a Will Ospreay, I think he kind of takes a little bit more offense to that because it's like, yeah, it, you you had to. I think Noro Suzuki views moves like the Stormbreaker's trickeration and such. So uh, I don't know. I just think he feels it more of a valiant fight if he loses a fight to somebody like Kota Ibushi. Would it was a fight like that? You know? Yeah, I, I think you're very much onto something. I think he, in his own way, has more respect for that style it's almost like okay you beat me at my own game i'll give credit where it's due that was fun i'm gonna destroy you in the future but you know it's almost like the dread pirate roberts and wesley you know good night wesley sleep well i'll most likely kill you in the morning and it just goes on for years and then it doesn't really happen but i i I think you know as far as minoru suzuki is concerned you know, this was an acceptable 
defeat because he was essentially beaten at his own game. Facts. And we might as well go to the Osprey and Taichi right here. So uh, I, I was kind of a little bit apprehensive of this match. You know, I, I was kind of like, all right, I didn't know how it was going to go. But credit to Taichi right here. He, he's having a solid G1. And of course, Will Osprey, he's been decent. You know, his selling is a little spotty, you know, so that is what it is. But I thought the spot where he just said, you know, pretty much fuck you to the eyes cutter by kicking him midair was excellent. I thought it was a really great <laughs> match. Yeah, I thought it was a really good match between these two guys. I really did. And you wouldn't think these two guys would have that sort of chemistry. So shout out to him. More shout out to the Holy Emperor Taichi. Yeah, well, Osprey, you got your win, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, he, he did get the win, but yeah, I, I was a little bit surprised at how well this match came off also. And you know, one thing I love about Taichi. Yeah, you see it with you know his life partner Zack Saber Jr. as well, is the utter disdain for his opponent. Like you know, you could just see him sneering as he kicked him in the os cutter. Like you know, you are not even worth anything beyond this. Like it's a strategy, but it's also you know very much contempt for the person in front of you and I like that in my wrestling not every single match obviously but for somebody like Tai Chi it absolutely works and you know, Tai Chi is another person who you know has not really been in the heavyweight division all that long but let's face it Tai Chi as a junior heavyweight was always a joke so yeah he he understands what it's like to recently go from the junior division to the heavyweight division and maybe not be taken seriously, even though Tai Chi is a much bigger guy. Um, tai Chi's backstage comments have cracked me up every time, and this was no exception. He, he walks through the back, you know, he's holding his neck, and... He says, you know, he's basically complaining that he's he lost again, that now he's in the negative because he's got three wins and four losses. And then he just looks at the camera and goes, I'm tired. I may have to drop out, just <laughs> drop out of the whole thing. And then he walks away. <laughs> yeah, he, He's always talking about being tired. And, you know, you know, unlike Tanahashi, I tire easily. And, you know, eh, screw this. I'm dropping out. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so, done. I'm done. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna get Zach. We're gonna go get drunk and eat vegetables together. You know, <laughs> exactly. So, like, I'm, I'm, he's like the world tag league's coming up, so I'm not worried about this. <laughs> so yeah, I I enjoyed everything. Although I enjoyed the Tai Chi side of everything more. Um, the Jay White versus Yujiro match is part of the reason that I have completely reconsidered how all of this could end. Now, I'm not totally letting go of my original idea that Kota Ibushi is going to win the G1 a second time back-to-back. -back. However, I think we all kind of knew that even if Yujiro acted like he was going to lay down for Jay White, he wasn't really going to. I, I think we all kind of knew that. But it was a question of how much effort was Yujiro really going to put out and how was Jay going to respond to it? Turns out the answer to that is Yujiro's actually going to do a pretty good job of trying and Jay is going to completely lose his shit and melt down. So this is very interesting. And I mean, Yujiro just straight punched Jay in the dick. Like, you know, okay, you are a true pimp, sir. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and you know, yeah, sure. Jay did it right back to him. And that was how he managed to hit him with the blade runner ultimately. But Yujiro was like, you know, well, and again, this was in the backstage comments, so you didn't know until later, but, you know, Yujiro praised Jay to the skies as the best leader that Bullet Club has ever had, and that, you know, all of that is really cool and all, but 
that basically in the G1, it's every man for himself. And so Jay, who I might add, did not even bother to put on his wrestling gear to come out for this match. I mean, you know, he had his hair up in the ponytail and the sweatband around it. He was still wearing the T-shirt and the sweatpants and the tennis shoes. Like, he did not even bother to put on his gear. Which, you know, if I'm you, Drew, I'm feeling kind of uh, insulted at that point. So, you know, Jay gets the win, and then he's just screaming at Ghetto, Did you know about this? You know, and you know, Ghetto's playing off like, No, 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 I didn't know anything. And Jay just storms off without anybody. And then they get to the back and Jay just has a complete meltdown. He's screaming at the people in the back. He's throwing chairs around. He's yelling at Ghetto. Is this evil's idea? Is this what the plan is now? Huh? What's going on? And Ghetto's like, no, no, no. I didn't know anything. Are you sure? So, you know, Jay is already, you know, sunk into paranoia. And, you know, not to put, you know, too strong of a picture on it, but I posted earlier on Twitter today that, so, uh, Jay White is basically the home-wrecking side piece who is now completely paranoid that he's about to get dumped and replaced by a newer, shinier model because that's exactly the situation he was in two years ago. And that's kind of what this is. And so now a lot of people were clamoring for a Jay White face turn out of this, you know, potential tension with evil. Because we've seen evil starting shit and stirring the pot, you know, you got a lot of faith in Yujiro there, Jay, or, you know, man, you're uh, putting a lot of trust in ghetto, huh? All right. And yeah, Evil's just being a dick about all of this, and Jay is losing his mind. And so the question is kind of obvious now. Is there really some kind of plan going on between Evil and Ghetto, and Jay's going to get kicked to the curb? Or is Jay going to become such a loose cannon and his paranoia so out of control that Bullet Club gets rid of him because they just can't deal with him anymore, and he essentially brings it on himself. Mm. Huh. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, wax and poetic right there. I, I, I love that. And I didn't know how that match was going to go. I really didn't, because in Bullet Club matches of the past, they've been kind of of the comedic, jovial nature. I mean, excusing the Kenta Evil match, but... Before that, when there would be Bullet Club matches in the G1 Climax, if you get like a, the one, I guess the one, one of the ones that comes to mind for me is uh, AJ Styles went against Fale, and that was a very comedic match. Yujiro and Machine Gun had a couple comedic matches as well in the G1 Climax. They normally have a spirited affair. You know, it's, just, it's, it's friendly competition, if you will, normally when a Bullet Club is doing it. And these matches with the Bullet Club guys have been very, very different from Bullet Club matches in G1's past. So... Something to take evil was definitely stirring the pot. He definitely is. He's like when he says, "Oh, when he when he said that, I was like, oh my gosh, this dude, man." <laughs> I was like, "This guy, get a load of this guy over here. Look at evil over here." But no, this was a great segment, and it, yeah, what you said, it could have very much happened with Jay White spiraling in either one of those directions. So, and also too, I think I even said this to you on uh, our messaging, and it was about evil. I was like, what if? Evil gets kicked out of Bullet Club and Evil would take over Suzuki Gun and it'd be like an Evil Gun type situation, which I think that could be a stretch. But, you know, I'm just looking at all options here. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to see what all options could happen. You know, we got plenty of time to talk about that. It was just, I just want to put that in the air a little bit, you know, so I don't know. But, uh, shit, why don't you tell us what you think about Jeff Cobb and Tomohiro Ishii? Uh, I think very highly of Jeff Cobb versus Tomohiro Ishii, and this is one of those matches that I went into perfectly content for it to go either way. Jeff Cobb has gotten some unexpected victories over some pretty big-name competition. Yeah, I'm still floored that he beat Shingo Takagi earlier on, and going into this, I kind of assumed that, you know, 
Ishii was going to pick up this win, and he did not. So it was a surprise, but it was not a bad surprise. And Ishii and Cobb are two guys that I just really enjoy together because their styles are similar, but they're different enough that you you completely believe either guy could you know, get the win at any point, and that's absolutely what happened here. Yeah, I, I have just been so impressed with Jeff Cobb in this G1. I know we've said many times that it's just a night and day difference from his previous G1, but even leaving that out, if you just took this totally on its own, if this is your only you know, familiarity with Jeff Cobb are the G1 matches that he has had in this tournament. This is some very, very good work. You know, he hasn't had a bad match at all. You know, he's in the best shape of his life. He's flying around like you would not believe. I mean, you, you'd think that you and I would be accustomed to this and you, you not gasp when he throws a moonsault out of nowhere, but you'd be wrong. And so the fact that Cobb got the win here, you know, and not just here, you know, some of the wins that he beat Jay White and, you know, granted, I know I talked about them being on the new Japan strong show in America on a previous episode, but the fact that Jeff Cobb is getting victories over Jay White, Tomohiro Ishii, Shingo Takagi, yeah, this indicates that the company thinks very highly of him. And if it's true that he has signed a contract with them and he's not going to be doing anything else, then we could see him in a variety of different situations and I would not be upset. 100%. Maybe future U.S. heavyweight champion. We don't know. Uh, but future will tell that. I thought this was great. I love this match right here. <laughs> Hard hitting, snarly suplexes. Of course, the crowd was into it. Both these guys went to edit. And in my opinion, this, this wasn't the best match for Cobb. This was a super high end match for Tomohiro Ishii as well. So definitely watch this match if you get a chance. Banger. Banger and a half. So that was yeah. Saturday, October the 10th in Osaka. And then we go to Block B in Aichi on the 11th at Aichi Prefectural Gymnasium. They had 2,550 people there. So we're, we're getting more in our attendance. And, you know, if you just glance at the television, it doesn't look too spread out. I mean, I don't mean it like that. I mean, if you just kind of glance at the audience, it just looks like a normal show. You have to kind of pay attention to the audience instead of the match to realize that they are spread out and distancing in any way. So, yeah, that that's nice because it lends a sense of normalcy to the whole thing. And... Let's face it, that's kind of what we want right now is some normalcy. <laughs> uh, so we open with Gabriel Kidd defeating Yoda Suji in about seven minutes with a double arm suplex. And this means that poor, poor Suji has lost two in a row. And Gabriel Kidd is taking particular delight in rubbing his face in that. And speaking of Suji's face, his facial hair is starting to make a reappearance, and he appears to have been granted access to conditioner once again. So he's starting to look like the Suji that we recall, as opposed to the Suji who started this G1. So you know, Gabriel Kidd has another victory over Suji, and as we've talked about several times, Gabriel Kidd and Yuya Uyamura have wrestling matches. Gabriel Kidd and Yoda Suji have fights. And this was another such. And you know, when they talk about it backstage, you know, you know, Suji 
takes himself to task for you know, not thinking about anything other than the Boston Crab. And Gabriel Kidd is shedding some of that humility. He actually says in his latest backstage comments, you know, look at me. I'm a monster in that ring. And you're just like, all right, man, you, you, you go. You, you have uh, gotten the victory. You get to say that. So then we go to the first G1 tournament match on the card where Zack Sabre Jr. takes on and defeats Yoshihashi. However, in the 13 and a half minutes that it took Zack to do this, Yoshihashi completely brought it, and this was not the same situation that we have had with these two in the past. You know, we all remember Zach backstage talking about how he's going to have to call his mom and tell her how he's lost to Yoshihashi. Humiliating. <laughs> And, you know, he does not have to make that phone call this time, but in Zach's backstage comments, he just, he can barely formulate a sentence. He's praising Yoshihashi to the skies. He's not even being snarky about it. Like, the the, the meanest thing he says is that, you know, what is this? What even is this? He couldn't walk to the ring without dislocating his shoulder once. Where the hell did those chops come from? And... Yeah, he ends with, yeah, he was my favorite person to take the piss, but he's like gotten good. And yeah, yeah. so Zach gets the win, but he had to work for it and he had to work for it hard. And he is very much giving credit to Yoshihashi where it's due. So I will continue to say that, yes, Yoshihashi is not only having the best G1 of his career, he's having the best matches across the board of his career, and I will absolutely give credit to that. I still don't have to care about him. And I don't. So, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, I said it, whatever. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next match, we have Kenta defeating Toru Yano in just under nine minutes through treachery, shenanigans, and an actual countout. Now, this was not a match. This was Kenta and Yano yelling and screaming at each other. Um, I'm sure if I understood Japanese better, I would have appreciated it a whole lot more. But th they are constantly yelling at each other. Yano's getting searched by the referee for plunder. And... You know, they take turns running out, uh, rolling out of the ring and stalling and basically you know, being obnoxious to one another. And the match actually ends with Kenta taping Yano to the set at the top of the ramp. And what just absolutely made the moment was the fact that Kenta opens the briefcase and like a dozen rolls of tape fall out. So <laughs> this whole time, Kenta has had Yano searched by the referee. He's you know constantly pointing at Yano. Go, hey, hey, hey! He he's got a thing. He's doing a thing. The entire time, Kenta had a briefcase filled with rolls of tape, specifically for this purpose. So you know all the tape falls out of the briefcase. Kenta tapes Yano's arm to the entranceway set, goes running back to the ring, wins by countout. So Kenta most definitely beat Yano at his own game. I, you know, I will not say that it was as entertaining as the Zack Sabre Jr. and Yano match, but you know, it was fun, and I think for the people there, it was probably more fun than it was you know, watching it on television. Next match, we have uh, my pirate crewmate, regardless of his outfit, Sonata taking on and defeating Juice Robinson in about 15 minutes. Juice and Sonata are good together, I think. This was not, you know, the best match between them, you know, past or future. I mean, it, it was fine, but... 
I think they have a better match in them. This is this is a weird time. Yeah, this is the part of the G1 where people who might usually have really good matches together kind of don't. Like, the matches aren't bad, but they're just not up to your expectations. And then people who maybe haven't been doing so great will just blow your mind with, you know, this match that they had. So, you know, Sonata wins with, you know, his moonsault, which he is apparently trying to do all the time now. Um, so Sonata is now at eight points with four wins and three losses. Juice is at six points with three wins and four losses. But again, Juice is looking really good in these matches. This is some of the best stuff that we've seen out of him. And let's not forget how long he hasn't really been doing much of anything. The semi-main event was Hiroki Goto versus Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Hiroki Goto defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi and basically took him out of the running for the finals at all. 13 minutes, 38 seconds, a GTR, and Goto is not entirely out of options. You know, some crazy math would have to happen. It's not likely, but you know, there are people who have considered every possible setup, mathematically speaking, with tiebreakers and everything. And even if Goto is out of it, you know, he is reminding everybody just how good he can be. I mean, he's had some very good matches and this match was so, so very good. And I was genuinely surprised that Goto won it, but I was happy to see that he did. What I was not happy to see was the outcome of the main event, though I kind of knew it was going to happen. You just, you, you had a feeling, and that was evil defeating Tetsuya Naito in just under 24 minutes, and yeah, I, I I do have to give credit where it's due here. Dick Togo's interference was less than it has been, and it seemed more strategic. The actual wrestling match between Naito and Evil was the best I've seen since Evil turned on LIJ and joined Bullet Club. So, it was good. I just don't like to see Naito lose. And I certainly don't like to see Naito lose to Evil. So, uh, there was that. 100%. Uh, <clears throat> I was watching Evil's post-match comments, and it kind of had, had, kind of had a little bit of something to do but about Jay, what we were talking about earlier. But he called Naito a false champion. And I'm just like, bruh, you, at, you just won finally just beat him fair. for the, I say air quotations fair for the first time. And you were only able to beat him for the titles because of this all this interference. So I was like, false champion, bro. You need to have several seats with the shit you're talking right now, because you you only <laughs> beat him. You know what I mean? You're not like you're not just running through these people. Let's let's not forget you got Zack Sabre Jr. pinned you in like what five minutes, six minutes? I can't remember. It was early in the G1, but you need to have several seats. Evil. This was a good match, though. You know, all jokes aside, this is a really good match. I enjoyed the ending sequence a lot. I like how Evil transitioned the uh, the Destino into everything is evil. That was something to look for, and it got Evil that I guess it's still a questionable win. It wasn't a clean victory, but. The interference was a little bit nullified at some point by Tetsu United, even though there was still interference. But I guess this is as clean as a win as a guy like Evil is going to get right now. So it it is what it is on that. Um, no, I I was kind of apprehensive. Maybe this match would go too, a little bit too long, but uh, I, it, it, it was what it was. I actually thought this was probably uh, the three matches that they've had so far. This is probably, I would say, this is slightly behind the uh, Jingu Stadium match, simply because of the result. So it is what it is. But uh, <laughs> we got to take shots, but whatever. But um, yeah, the penultimate match between Hiroki Goto and Hiroshi Tanahashi, I was really surprised that Goto got this victory off right here. So Goto was, you know, he had, we had the knee work by him. He, you know, was hitting Tanahashi with the Ushigiroshi. 
He's hitting their nice spots. This is some really good wrestling from two wrestlers that you really shouldn't expect anything less from. So, man, Goto gets to win here. And after this night, for all intents and purposes, he is sitting at third place. He's tied with third place with Sonata. So it's looking very interesting for Oki Goto. It really, really is. So hmm, I wasn't surprised he got the victory. I, I really, I'm not going to lie. I really was. I don't see Goto beat Tanahashi a lot. And... Sonata and Juice Robinson, I liked it, but ultimately, I think it was just more a paint by the numbers match for me with a good segment. I didn't enjoy this stuff near the end, but I don't think that was enough to say this is, oh, this is the best match these guys had. It was solid, but I just think ultimately it's going to be one of those matches when we look back at G1, we probably will ultimately forget about it. It happens. We talk about many, many matches during this stuff. So, Kenta, Yano. Loved it. Kenta's a fucking boss. Look, K out here, man. It's taping him. Then when he punched him and then just waved by, I was just like, this dude is crazy. <laughs> like, this dude is legit insane. So I love that. Kenta, that was that was great. Yano Loki, even though he's doing Yano shenanigans, he's having a really good entertaining G1. So shout out to Tori Yano, of course, for that. And Zack Sabre Jr. Yoshihashi right here. Solid, solid match right here. And Zack Sabre Jr. just stretching this torturing Yoshihashi at the end of this match. I was like, man, is my man going to tap out at any point? Because this is bad. He's making him uh, one of those Wetzel's pretzels. All you needed was some dipping sauce for Yoshihashi because he was done right here. Thought it was really good. Like I said, Yoshihashi, as we've all said, is having the best matches of his his career. He's came in in really, really good shape. And this is low-key a battle of the tag team champions because you have one guy who's a trios tag champ and, of course, the reigning heavyweight tag team champions in Zack Sabre Jr. So they both wanted to test their tag team championship muscles. And this match ultimately eliminated Yoshihashi from winning the G1. But I don't think that's a shocker to anyone here. So mm-hmm. I thought, thought it was a really solid night of Block B action. We have a couple matches left in this Block B. Uh, of course, with Block A, too. Block A ain't done either. I'm talking like Block A done, but it's not... So uh, final point standings in this on Block B right here. We Evil is leading the block. He, he and Naito both have 10 points, but you have to give the tiebreaker to Evil because he beat Naito. Both these guys on 10 points. Goto, Sonata, Saber all on eight points. Tanahashi, Juice Robinson on six, along with Kenta. They're not eliminated, but, you know, mathematically, but we kind of know that they're pretty much eliminated. You know, we already know that this is their end of their G1 chapter, you know, so it, it's all to the good. But, Jay, we got a show coming up tomorrow morning, and we got a show coming up Wednesday morning. Actually, we got a string of shows, but we only going to talk about the next two shows coming up. We can just preview these G1 matches real quick, so I say mm-hmm. we get into it. Excuse oh, absolutely. I- so, <laughs> the matches that we're looking at for Block A, we've got... Okada and Ishii, Suzuki and Jay White, Shingo and Taichi, Ibushi and Yujiro, Osprey and Jeff Cobb. So what do you think about that? Mm, let's see what I think about that. As I look at this card, as it looks very, very appetizing, look like a big old fat old steak. Jeff Cobb and Will Osprey is really interesting. Uh, last time we seen these guys face off, they faced off in the G1 Supercard show in Madison Square Garden. Jeff Cobb got the win. I think with that, I think Will Ospreay is going to even up the score right here. I got Will Ospreay beating Jeff Cobb, getting this sixth win, getting this 12 point, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, uh, as much as I would like to believe otherwise, I, you know, word always was that this was going to be Ospreay's G1, not necessarily in terms of him winning it, but that he was going to be a very dominant force in the G1 and I think with some of the big name victories that Cobb has had that we did not expect him to get I think him taking a loss here is not going to be terribly unexpected although in the context of what you said about their previous match it is even more likely than that Shit, what we got next? Uh, Kota Ibushi versus Yujiro Takahashi. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, I'm trying to see who Yujiro has left, because he's going to get a victory. He's not going to go winless in this G1. He's not going to pull a uh, Honma, so he's going to get a victory. I don't think it's going to be against Kota Ibushi, though, unfortunately. I think Golden Star triumphs, and our man, you know, Tokyo Pimp, got to take another L. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, because I have not totally given up that Ibushi could win this thing. 
because as far as you know, who's realistically in the running to win the G1, you've also got to think about, okay, that's going to be your Wrestle Kingdom main event. And, you know, Ibushi versus Naito is legendary because the chances that one or both of them may not survive the match are always there. And, you know, we, we as fans love it and hate it because the matches are going to be some of the most amazing ever, but it's going to shorten our lives by about five years because we're watching it going, oh my God, no, don't do that. But, you know, it, it's theoretically possible that we could still have Ibushi come out on top here, but he's going to have to win stuff. And so I don't think Yujiro's only victory is going to come at his expense. Mm. Shit, next we got Shingo Takaki taking on Holy Emperor Taichi right here. And this one is a tough one for me because I would like for Taichi to get off his losing streak, get off the snide right here. But then again, I think we might be in the midst of a Shingo run here towards the end of the tournament. So it kind of is like, which one do you think is going to happen? Is Shingo going to keep, you know, rolling, rampaging, dragging as he's going to be? Or is the Holy Emperor going to sneak one out right here? And I think Shingo rolls. I really do. I think between both of these guys... You can have Taichi lose to Shingo right here, and it's still not affecting him. He's still a tag team champion at this point. Shingo's probably the one you want to get back on that streak as this tournament comes to an end. Well, I, I understand that, and I agree with it to a point. However, Taichi has been on a losing streak three in a row. Yeah. And the fact that he is a current champion and Shingo is not. Yeah, I, I think we we need to see Tai Chi kind of come back from that. So this is a very difficult one for me to call. I uh, I would be content with either guy winning. Normally, I'd be pulling for Shingo all the way, but I, I just feel like Tai Chi has to get a win here. Neither one of these guys are going to the finals anyway. So, uh, I, I, I think Tai Chi is going to pull it out. I mean, he normally does, but he doesn't go that far. But, you know, it's just, I mean, you know, pulling his pants off and whatnot. But it is what it is. Shit, in the penultimate match of the show, Jay, we have the boss of Suzuki going, Minoru Suzuki, taking on the current boss of Bullet Club for now anyway. Maybe, you know, we don't know. Jay White right here. So the last time these guys faced off, it was in G1 Climax. I believe it was two years ago, G1 Climax 28. Jay White mm -hmm. actually started off 3-0, and and he actually had his streak ended abruptly by the man he's facing on this night, Minoru Suzuki. So hmm, we know Suzuki's not winning the G1, and Jay White's going to be there towards the end. He needs victories because he's already lost to Okada. Or actually, he beat Okada, excuse me. I don't know why I keep thinking Okada beat him. I don't know why I keep thinking that he beat Okada. But he lost to Osprey. So he needs to at least stay ahead of Okada. But he also has to keep pace with Will Osprey because he beat him. So I would like Minoru. I actually, it really wouldn't matter who won this match for me because I like both of these guys. But I think Jay White's winning. Well, the last time they met after Suzuki dispatched him Suzuki's backstage comments were pretty scathing he said well they were scathing but at the same time there was just a tiny glimmer of what might pass for potential respect like not respect yet but Suzuki said to Jay White you know does that little blade of yours know how to cut throats or is it just for show and so you you got the idea that suzuki understood where jay was trying to go but at the same time jay was nowhere near ready to step to murder dad but times are different now I'm pulling for Jay here just you know, partly because, as you say, I feel like 
he's got to stay even with Osprey, and you know that loss to Jeff Cobb sort of came out of nowhere. So you know we we can't have Jay get too far behind because now I'm wondering at the possibility of Jay meeting either Evil or Sonata in the finals, because let's remember, pretty much everybody thought that the New Japan Cup was going to come down to Jay versus Sonata in the finals, and Sonata was going to beat him. It's theoretically possible that they've simply taken that idea and moved it from the New Japan Cup to the G1. That could totally happen. It's also possible that we could get Jay versus Evil in the finals because they've totally you know, started putting the pieces together, although I will admit it's a bit soon for the way you know, storytelling in New Japan usually goes. But I hadn't really thought about Jay making the finals before, and I'm thinking about it now, so it's, it's a possibility. So I, I'm hoping that this latest, you know, unhinged, frantic Jay White kind of combines with, you know, the devious strategizing Jay White and makes him just dangerous enough that he can pull out a victory over Minoru Suzuki. You know, nothing Jeez. definitive, obviously, but, you know, enough to, you know, get a win and then get the hell out of the ring. <laughs> Well, shit, I'm looking at the block A standings right now, and all but four guys are eliminated. They, you know, six guys can't win the tournament. I think you all know who the four guys are who are remaining to win this tournament. They're all tied at 10 right now. So it's coming down. It's coming close. And it's all about tiebreakers. So then we get the main event of the show. We get Patrick Okada taking on Tomohiro Ishii right there. And I would love Tomohiro Ishii won this match. I just think with just what I just said right there, Okada is, he lost to Jay White and he lost to Kota Ibushi. So he lost to the guys that are remaining and that still have a chance. Somebody can be a spoiler, but I just don't see it being Tomohiro Ishii right here. I really don't. I think they, it's pretty much the same thing that we're saying with Jay White. They have to keep Okada on pace with Jay White, who he, who he lost to. He hasn't wrestled with Will Ospreay yet. He's lost to Kota Ibushi, so he almost has to keep pace more than Jay White actually does. So I got to go Okada. Yeah, that's fair. And you know, as much as I would like to see Ishii get the win here, if we're supposed to even consider the possibility of Okada making the finals, we sort of can't. Hail to the now. So. I mean, I would, and plus with these guys being eliminated, it, it kind of makes sense for them to keep the ones who are still active winning, I guess, until the end to the last day. But, you know, weirder things have happened. So we can, pre we can predict Block B on the next day, which is in uh, Kanagawa. So Kanagawa, I'm, I butchered it. I'm yeah. not even going to say it Ka anymore. Kanagawa. Thank you. That's, what, that's why we pay you the big bucks here. <laughs> that is <laughs> most definitely why. Uh, so on this on this night, Jay, we, our first block action, we have Yoshihashi taking on Kenta right here. Yoshihashi eliminated. Still can put out good showings right here. Kenta's not really eliminated mathematically. I know he has a match with Naito coming up here soon. So he's probably going to lose that match to Naito. He's going to beat Yoshihashi. <laughs> hmm. I would like to see Kenta beat Yoshihashi because... You know, aside from his recent shenanigans with Yano, yeah, this just feels like a match that Kenta should win. And, you know, with Yoshihashi being eliminated, you know, if he's going to be a spoiler, he should be a spoiler for somebody who is higher up in points. So I I'm going to be pulling for Kenta here. Yeah, and it is like you said, it just makes sense to go for somebody who has a higher point total. It just makes all the sense. So the next block B action, we have Juice Robinson taking on Zack Sabre Jr. These guys are not strangers to each other. Zack Sabre Jr., I think, has the edge in this series right now. But I think it's going to go a little different. I think Juice Robinson's getting the win here. I think they're 
Juice Robinson is about to become a solid upper mid Carter, which he already is, proven with that much in Aito. But I think Juice finally gets the win here over Zach Sabre Jr. Yeah, Zach has had you know, some victories. You know, he you know he had his win over Yano. He had his win over Yoshihashi. I think he's taken a loss, and you know, I, I could absolutely see you know he's. Tying Juice up in knots, but if Juice can just hit that left hand of God and knock him out, because if you hit Zach, he drops. You know, he can't really take a punch. But you've got to be able to hit him first. And if he breaks both your arms, you can't do that. So I, I, I think we're going to see Juice get the win here, too. Oh, and I just looked at who Zach Sabre Jr.'s last match is at the block, and it's kind of interesting. <laughs> It's kind of some golden ace, dangerous techers action. But uh, yeah, it'd be very, very interesting to see how that one plays out. But we'll talk about that soon. A next match right here, which I think I know how this is definitely going to play out. We have Toriano, the king of pro wrestling reigning winner right here, trophy holder, taking on the IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion Tetsuya Naito here. And Naito's actually dropped, I think, his last two matches to Yano in the G1 Climax. So that pretty much tells me all I need to know. Naito's winning this match right here. He probably won't lose another match at this point. He's already dropped two, and the two dudes that beat him will be in the final because they beat him. So Naito's not dropping any more matches. He beat Jano. Easy. Well, I certainly hope so, but, you know, with the Yano match, you never know for sure. I, you know, I think we all understood that Naito was not going to make the finals, and... It makes sense. He's a double champion and he needs challengers. So as much as I personally would have liked him making the finals, I didn't realistically see it happen. You know, I hope he wins this match and just loses out on getting to the finals through tiebreakers. But you can never be sure about a Yano match. So, yeah. I'm not going to be totally shocked if Yano manages to beat him. I wouldn't be either, honestly. It It's Yano, like you said. And then we got the penultimate match of the show. We have Roki go to take the kink of darkness evil right here. Now, this is a very different shade to this rivalry. When this rivalry started, Goto was winning the bulk of these matches right here. Goto was pretty much handling this feud. And I would probably say this is very much changed right here, not because they've been in the ring a lot with each other, but the dynamic of New Japan has definitely changed with Evil on the upper echelon of that. And uh, Hiroki Goto being a spoiler to Evil, I would love it. I think it'd be great, but it's not happening for what they need to do and what we think is going to happen. So Evil wins right here, even though I would actually want Goto to beat him. Evil wins. Well, I think we're going to see more of the treachery and shenanigans from Dick Togo. I think that they're going to really go after that injured shoulder that Goto has been nursing. And I think that's going to be what loses him the match. I think it's going to be a combination of targeting that and, you know, two on one shenanigans because I, I seriously think that, you know, Evil versus Sonata, the last match on the last day is going to be for the block. And that means they both have to keep winning from here on out. Shit, then we got the main event. Ace Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on Cold Skull himself, Sonata. And Sonata started off with some losses, but he's been on a roll right here. And I think we can probably agree that this role is going to continue. Hiroshi Tanahashi, I'm, I'm sorry, but I love you, bro. But it's, it's just not going to be the night. It's not just going to get the victory. And it's setting them up for what we're talking about here for a block ending match with the man he has on the last night. So, I, Sonata, easy. Well, yeah, I, I don't know about easy, but, yeah, you know, work. <laughs> the, uh, you know, Tanahashi's already eliminated and he knows it so I, I think the idea of him beating Sonata here would be you know ridiculous but Tanahashi and Sonata even though they haven't had one-on-one -on -one matches lately were always a very good combination because their styles mesh really really well they're similar 
but you know not identical and I think we're going to get a surprisingly good match out of that. And when I say surprisingly, I don't mean for these guys. I mean for this point in the tournament and the fact that Tanahashi has been mathematically eliminated. Yeah. I I think this is going to be a good one, or at least on paper it ought to be. Shit, guys. That's it. We are ready until Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. We're ready until the end of, end of the G1. We're in the closing stretch here. So just sit back with us, man. Y'all been here the whole time with us. We appreciate it. Y'all could have been anywhere else, but y'all chose to kick it with us. So thank you. We appreciate y'all. So, yeah, Jay, we, we pretty much hit everything that we going to hit. So is there anything you want to say before we get up out of here, before we wrap this thing up? Uh, just we, We're so very close to the end, and I know that, you know, there are other things that people could be watching right now, and we are very pleased that you have spent time with us. My sis said it pretty eloquently and pretty excellently, so we're going to end it there. Y'all know what to do. Go ahead and like this, share this, all that good stuff, man. We'll holler at y'all later for the more G1 action, the closing stretch. So we in the back. We we passed the back now. We in like the back the last four. So we out here, man. Till the end, y'all know what to do, man. Tranquilo, baby.